Hey everyone and welcome to another episode about the LEGO Train Automated Container Terminal that I'm building. Um, in this episode we're going to actually move some containers. I built a test setup to, uh, to test if the vertical movement system that I built in the previous episodes is working fine or not. Uh, we're going to test it with a duration test, so uh, let's get started. I built this very quick and dirty test setup that will be used to test if the crane is working like I wanted it to. And um, this is one of the most quick and dirtiest things I ever built. <laughs> so here are the electronics, I won't bother you with that. These electronics control the, the motors and uh, the valve of the uh, pneumatic system. And below here we have also two sensors left and right to make sure that when it goes to the left, it stops at a certain point and to the right, the same thing. And this little guy here makes sure, come on, focus on the thing. This little guy here makes sure that it stops on the left side. And this little guy makes sure that it stops on the right side. And I hope for them that they do. Otherwise, they get run over. So, um, there's just one thing missing in this whole thing and that is how do I get air because what we're gonna do is we're gonna stack three containers on top of each other on the left side and we're gonna move them one by one to the right side and then one by one move them back to the left side that's the duration test that I want to perform and um, by doing so I don't want to use the uh, hand pump that you see there but I'm gonna use the compressor that I have built also two years ago something like that and maybe you remember it, um, it has been sitting idle for two years on top of the closet. And I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there is a layer of dust on top of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that it's clean again before I enable the whole thing. And how I'm going to do that, ironically, with a compressor. <laughs> so I'm going to... Clean the compressor with another compressor, blow the dust out, suck it up with the vacuum cleaner. And um, well, let's see if we can get this thing clean again. Alright, the thing is cleaned. Let's fire it up. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Nothing happens. What you hear is the test program from the uh, from the crane, but the compressor doesn't work. Well, that's a bummer. Oh crap! There's the switch. Oh yeah. Let me see. Light on. Yes. Alright, this works. I can now continue with writing the uh, test program and then uh, we're gonna move some containers. Alright, everything is set up now for the uh, test. As you can see, the containers are now on the left side and they will be moved to the right side one by one and then back again to the left side. That's just one sequence. We're gonna have a look if that's going well and if that is going well, then we can uh, do multiple sequences as a duration test to see how many sequences will be good before there's an error and something will go wrong eventually I can tell you that there's two things going on here that um, needs a bit of attention one thing is that there's barely no space between the uh, containers the top of the container right now and the uh, lower side of the grabber that you see there and um, it's, it's going above it so there's no problem right now but that's something uh, I need a fix. I need to make the grabber uh, reach one step uh, longer so I don't have the problem anymore. 
next to that there's a leak in the compressor and right now I haven't looked carefully for it but um, oh shut up windows um, the, the thing is that it, it doesn't go beyond 37 psi and two years ago it went to 42 psi it shut off and then it, um, eventually it came back online on 35 psi back to 42 shut off and so on but now it doesn't reach the shut off point so it's continuously enabled and it doesn't reach the 42 either and that's a problem because i know that the red cray needs air pressure a lot of air pressure to function properly for this grabber it doesn't matter if it's i don't know uh, 30 is just enough but i believe if i remember correctly for the red crane i need at least 40 psi or something so there's going to be a bit of an issue because there's a leakage somewhere and it could be anywhere it could be in the uh in the connections it could be in the pumps i don't know <laughs> so that's going to be a hell of a job to find out unfortunately but that's uh for later concern let's start now the uh sequence test and see how it all performs so when I enable the uh, the power, you'll see the uh, compressor start and the program starts as well. I didn't connect the pressure OK uh, wire right now. Um, like I said, 25 psi is already enough. So uh, let's have a look. got our first error <laughs> like I said 25 was enough but the compressor was on I don't know 15 16 something like that and it was clearly not enough so the grabber didn't uh, close and that's why it didn't take the container with it um, so I need to build in a delay right now there on the same power source so when I enable the power source the program starts but I didn't connect the pressure okay wire because I was lazy so there are two things I can do the first thing is I can't connect the pressure okay wire but right now I don't know when it's given a signal it's it could be at I don't know 37 or something like that and um, then we're not gonna finish this uh, this test so I'm just gonna build in a delay of I don't know 10 15 20 seconds to build up some pressure for the compressor before the sequence is starting so that's gonna do right now Alright, the delay is set, let's see if it works now. So it's building up pressure now. And we got our second error. <laughs> it looks like I have to make the whole thing a bit higher um, anyway because it's it's now just hitting on the uh, the notch on the container I can do two things right now one thing is I'm gonna remove the notches for now I don't even know if they are necessary or not and the other thing is that I can make the extension of the arm a bit longer problem with that is that I need to time everything again so I need to uh, do a whole testing program again I'm not I'm not very eager to do that at this point so I'm gonna move, remove the notches and then we're gonna try again all right third attempt now you see that there's a bit more space between the uh, container and the grabber just enough and uh, let's see how it performs So first we have the delay to uh, build up some pressure. There we go.
Alright, they're on top of, of each other. Let's go back. Alright. Test successfully right now. Uh, the last container, I didn't know, I don't know if you noticed, but um, let me show you a bit. The last container went a bit... I have this tripod that isn't very handy. Um, the last container, you see there's a bit of an offset here. And that is because um, it grabbed a bit, a, a bit too low on the container. Then it went, uh, it came up, it went here, it went down. And then the container was hovering on this distance and then it let it go and that's why it, it, it skipped a bit. Um, not a real issue for now. Um, I think we can continue to do a duration test. So we're going to make a loop of this sequence and see how long it takes before there is going something wrong. What I previously forgot to mention was that we just don't need that notches on the containers because right now they are stacked beautifully on top of each other. So uh, that's a plus. So I'm going to start the, uh, the whole thing now. I made a loop in the program. So we're going to start the duration test and see how long it takes before the whole thing falls apart. Let's go. So there was a problem, but not in the system that I built. My camera became overheated. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I was recording also at, at 4K 100, 100 frames a second. So maybe uh, that's a bit too much for the camera to handle in this uh, hot attic in the summertime. But uh, we're gonna do a second try. And uh, well, you've seen two sequences, which did go very well. So let's see. Uh, how this uh, cycle goes.
All right, I have the feeling that this thing will run until the power uh, is out. I don't know exactly how many sequences it did because I was down uh, unpacking the dishwasher. But I believe it uh, It has been 15 minutes now, so it has been doing, I don't know, uh, five, six sequences, something like that. Maybe more even. So, um, and if you look at how the containers are stacked right now. They are more or less a bit not exactly on top of each other. You see there's a bit of uh, an offset. But the cool thing about this system is that when it grabs the container, it actually grabs it in a way that it, um, it centers itself again. So every time it grabs the container, it resets the offset a bit. So I was hoping for that. Uh, but it, the system performed much better than I expected. So I'm very happy with this. Um, please remember that this was only a test for the vertical movement and the precision of that. And it passed the test completely, of course. So what's next? The next thing is that we're going to build a frame on which uh, we can make this unit, this unit uh, move that way and that way in horizontal directions. And um, we're gonna have to make that work as well. We're gonna use the uh, the powered up uh, motors for that with the uh, position feedback system. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try to fix the bloody compressor. I don't know if I'm able to do that. Uh, I just don't know what the problem is. Yeah, I know what the problem is. There's a leakage somewhere. But as you can see, there are many, many connections with all the hoses. So uh, that's gonna take a few hours to, <laughs> to find the, the problem, unfortunately. Um, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it and uh, like this video. Uh, leave a comment what you think of it and see you next time. Bye.